Sivin Lu. I'm from HPC for House. Uh, I'm system, uh, system administration uh, administrator at HPC for House. I also do data analysis for next gene sequencing data analysis. I'm also work part time under Francis at OICR to maintain AWS uh, for for CVW workshops. <coughs> and again, th this slide was created by Francis Olay, and you feel free to use any of the slide. But if we believe in open source, if you use any of the slides, we ask you to open your slide also. Today, I'm going to briefly talk about the uh, cloud computing and guide you guys to log into our Amazon instance. So first question is, why cloud computing? The, I think the main reason is we are dealing huge amount of data. Our data set are reaching petabyte scale. For example, for a typical Illumina high seq pair and run, you usually get about 500 gigabytes raw data. So it's, it's kind of a challenge to transfer, store, and process this huge amount of data. The data will, be, will not be on your local laptop or desktop. It will be somewhere on the network. So compared to the raw data set, it's, it is smaller, uh, your software or tools to handle this data is kind of small. So it's easier to move your software or tools to the data than the other way. So when I learned how to program, I was, ta uh, the, the, I was ta uh, told the general procedure is you have your data and then you load this data into memory, you store it in an array or hash table, you process your data, and after you finish in processing your data, you can output your result to a file or print on screen. But now we are dealing with huge amount of data. Maybe we need to think to process uh, streaming data. Uh, a very simple example is if you want to do a summarization for numbers, you can you can load all those numbers into memory and then you add them one by one. And you may think another way you can just load one number at a time and add up into a variable or something. So when dealing with a huge amount of data, you need to think uh, memory is always an issue. So this graph. Uh, was created by Dr. Lincolnstein, who is the scientific director of OICR. And this yellow line shows how many base pair we can get with one dollar. This is before next gene sequencing. And this blue line shows how many storage we can purchase with one dollar. So the storage will be cheaper than the sequencing. So we have no problem to start our sequencing result. But this was before next, next gene sequencing. So when next gene, next gene generated sequencing came up, things changed. So the sequencing cost becomes cheaper and cheaper. So this red line show, shows us how, how many base pair we can get which uh, with next gene sequencing with one dollar. So the sequencing, sequencing will be cheaper. So in some day we will auto storage. We cannot store all the sequencing results. So we, we now have about 1,000 genome. But when we talk, talk about the cost, we need to also think about the storage, think about how much does it cost to process the data. And the doubling time of reduction of sequencing in cost is in many months range. And doubling time of storage and network bandwidth is a very small number of years range. And doubling time of CPU speed is about 18 months. So the cost of sequencing a base pair will equal the cost of storing a base pair by, ne uh, by in the next very small number of years. So there's always a question. Do we want to store our sequencing results, or we just resequence our sample when necessary? So we are dealing a lot of data. 
and usually the IT infrastructure in the institute or in the hospital is quite poor. So what can we do? We can definitely we need more money to buy bigger hardware. Or you can look into Sky, and there might be some solution over there. That is the cloud computing. So this is a typical pipeline for cloud computing. Use cloud computing to process your sequencing data. So you prepare your data, uh, your sample in your lab, and then you sequence your sample in a genomic center. You got your sequencing result, and then you ship or transfer your data to a cloud computing platform like Amazon. And then you do all the heavy duty work over there. Cloud computing is not new to us. If you ever use Google Doc or Jobbox or watch movie from Netflix, and you are using uh, cloud computing. And recently, Illumina just joined cloud computing family. Uh, Amazon uh, AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, uh, <coughs> is a cloud computing flat, uh, platform to make up on-demand uh, compute platform. They have a lot of services, but the most important two are storage and uh, high high performance computing. The storage at Amazon is called Simple Storage Services, also, also called S3. And this is the uh, object storage. Uh, if you have an Amazon account, if you have enough money, the storage is, is infinite. And the uh, AWS also provides elastic cloud computing. It's called EC2. Uh, this high high HPC compo computing is cost is charged per hour. So the high performance computing is over there if you have a, it's already over there if you have an Amazon uh, account. And Amazon has this multiple football field size HPC throughout the world. I think they have 12 regions currently. currently. And this uh, infrastructure is very easy to extend. They have this huge, huge container. You just plug in the power, it's ready to extend. Expand. When we do cloud computing, there are some challenges. So first, they are not cheap. Uh, we are using M3x large instance in the, in this workshop. It costs us about thirty cents per hour. It seems not so expensive, but you also need to consider the memory, uh, not the memory, the storage, and also the uh, network transport transferring and if you add uh, times 24 hour per day several days and three 30 students it's end up a big number in fact uh, when we first use use Amazon cloud computing uh, with after the workshop we've got to shut down all the instance and at the end of math we receive a very big number bill that was first mistake when we use Amazon Cloud. <coughs> so because we are dealing huge amount of data, to transfer data is a challenge. How do you transfer your uh, data or, uh, to the Amazon Cloud and transfer the result back? You need to think about that. And Amazon makes it free for you to transfer data to Amazon Cloud. But when you download data, you need to pay. So, this may not be the best solution for everybody. For example, if you are hosting a website on Amazon Cloud, the more people access your website, the more you need to pay. <laughs> so, another problem is there's no uh, cloud computer has no standard. So, if you have an instance in Amazon, it's not easy to transfer to other cloud computing providers. A big challenge for us is when you're dealing patient data, you need to think about security because Amazon is in cloud and you want to make sure 
your hospital allow you to upload data into Amazon. And Amazon is a US company. If you want to use Amazon Cloud, you want to make sure you are comfortable with US government has ability to look into your data. But we have some advantage to use cloud computing. That's why we use Amazon Cloud for this workshop every year. We receive a grant from Amazon. So this workshop is supported by AWS Research Grant Award. And in this class, we give everybody a separate instance. So if you mess up your own instance, nobody will know. <laughs> so we can just give, give, give you another one. And uh, as I said, there's a better way to transfer large files to Amazon. They make it free to upload data. And if you have huge amount, huge amount of data, you can contact them directly. Sometimes you can even ship your hard drive to Amazon with FedEx or something. The next day, they plug in your hard drive, and your data is ready to use. And a lot of data sets already on AWS, uh, Amazon Cloud Computing becomes more and more popular, so a lot of people are using and uh, sharing data uh, at AWS. For example, one genome, 1,000 genome data is already there, and some of the ICGC data is already there. And there are lots of uh, many useful biomedical AMIs, AMIs, Amazon Machine in Images. You can launch your instance based on these images, and all the bioinformatical tools are already installed for you. You can just start using Amazon Cloud. Uh, for example, they have Cloud Bio Linux uh, as an AMI, and they have CloudMan, which is a Galaxy uh, Amazon machine image. You can just launch this one and ready to use uh, uh, Galaxy uh, at AWS. Uh, we talk about, about AWS, but AWS, Amazon is not the only one who provides compu cloud computing. S uh, we have other uh, providers to choose. For example, Google, Microsoft are all providing cloud computing. So in this workshop, you will have some tools on your computer. You have tools on the web. You also have tools on cloud. You, when you work with, uh, with your data, you need to think about which, which working environment is, is better for you. We'll help you to tra transverse among these uh, various spaces. At the end workshop, you, you can make your own decision which platform you're going to, you're going to use. And there are different ways to use Amazon Cloud. Uh, the general way is use command line, just like you use your powerful Unix box or uh, HPC cluster. And some AMIs do provide a web interface. So you, for example, Galaxy, you can use web browser to access the cloud computing platform. When we talk about big data, it's, big data is really a relative term. So this is a in 1956, this is the five megabytes hard drive looks like. And now we have an external hard drive with five terabytes storage capacity, which is one million times more, and just this size. 